Today's project is going to be an ESP8266 data frame or a smart picture frame that pulls data off the internet to show you information you're going to be interested in such as stocks, weather, subway schedules, YouTube subscriber count. Hmm. So let's take a look at how we're going to build this. We're going to use a 4.2 inch wave share paper e-paper display. We're going to use uh, SPI serial peripheral interface to talk to a D1 Mini which is the ESP8266. The D1 Mini will actually talk to the internet using some RESTful APIs. We're going to use some libraries like Arduino JSON to unpack the responses we get. We're going to use the GXEPD2 library for doing the graphics. And we're also going to talk about the Rapid API website and some of the APIs that are available. So when we're done, we're going to end up with a picture frame with the LCD unit inside, giving us all the data that we want. Stay tuned, let's get this built. Okay, this is the schematic. In yellow is the D1 Mini, the microcontroller, and this is the e-paper display. The wiring is pretty typical for SPI. However, there are a few things that I should note to you. Specifically, D0 here on the D1 Mini ties to its own reset line. That's so when we call deep sleep on the D1 Mini, it can wake itself up. <clears throat> also, we have a pull-up resistor on the reset line of the display, and we have a pull-down resistor on the busy line of the display. This is per the GX EPDE library. Um, and it also specifically is used so that you can program the device when it's plugged into a USB and connected to the display. Sometimes you'll get problems with these lines and you won't actually be able to program the device while the e-paper device is plugged into it. This helps resolve some of that. So that's all there is to this. It's really easy to wire up and depending on how you want to handle your power situation you can either use a battery or in my case we're actually going to plug this into a wall wart all right with that let's go over to the bench all right we're at the bench and we're going to test how much current is used when the d1 mini is actually running versus when it's in deep sleep mode so I've written some code here that when I apply power to the ESP8266 it will wake up it will connect to the Wi-Fi it will generate a random number displayed on the screen for five seconds then it will say that it's going to sleep it'll sleep for another five seconds wake itself up using that D0 to reset line I showed you in the schematics and it'll repeat the process. What we can do is watch it using the multimeter here to see how much current is actually being used when it's awake versus when it's asleep. This can help you make decisions based upon what kind of power supply you want to use for your data frame. I'm actually going to use a wall wart for mine so the power isn't that big of a deal but playing with the deep sleep mode is interesting and you know we can always use that information in other projects in the future. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tie ground in here. I'm then gonna go ahead and press reset on it. So it should be connecting to my Wi-Fi. There we go, we got a screen clear, we got the number 44. So right now it's drawing about 80 milliamps. Now it says it's going to sleep and it looks like it's 10 milliamps or less. You've actually got a better display than I do. I'm looking at the power supply showing me what it's got. Okay, now we're drawing 80 milliamps plus. It's gonna go to sleep. We see it drop off. There's the current drop off and it's asleep. So you, you have a significant power savings in deep sleep mode. And we can use that knowledge either in this project or in future projects, especially if you're gonna do anything with battery drawn data, data collection, sensor reading. Um, all right, well, that was very informational. Okay, so we've proved the circuit. It works. 
We're on the breadboard. Now we need to move it to something a little more permanent. We're going to put it on a proto board. And the idea is to be able to mount this in some type of frame. Um, I actually made this frame and routed it out, but you can also buy different types of frames to do the same kind of thing. These came from a dollar store. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. It um, is clear on both sides. You know, you might be able to do something kind of almost like a shadow box. You might be able to do something cool with that. But I'm going to put it in mine that I built myself. So I made sure that the new board would fit inside there. I actually, when I made this, I designed it so that the screen would fit. Um, so what we're going to do is pull all this apart, basically, and clean it up, clean up all the connections, make them look nice, reliable. We're going to mount it into the frame, and then we'll go and take a look at some of the source code that drives the whole thing. All right, so while that was drying, I went and got a cloth to protect the screen since I've taken the screen cover off, and uh, that way I can lay it down. The glue is dried in the corners. I also went off and took my jack for my uh, five volt input and tested it. Also tested the five volt input and it is uh, positive on center. So I can set this up when I need to. <coughs> I use this sometimes as a <coughs> insulator. that to fit. <clears throat> Couple dabs. And then I'm just going to push down on it. And it should stay. I'm trying to be careful with some of the placement. I don't want to actually get, it's very hot. I don't want it on the components itself. Okay, now that I put the foam down to protect the electronics underneath so I don't accidentally create a short or anything, we need to wire all of these <coughs> um, SPI connections and voltage ground to the board, which will then obviously go to the connector. Okay, so after I'm done wiring up all the connections, the SPI connections, the board's installed, the pull up and the pull down resistors, and I've got power. Before I glue everything down, I want to make sure that it's working. So I'm going to apply the 5 volt power. We're going to take a look at what happens on the screen here. Should connect to the Wi-Fi. There we go. Get a flash and check subscriber count. Oh, it appears to be working. So now I can finish it up. Um, put everything in place, glue it, and then we can go and take a look at some of the source code. So while researching this project, I needed to find a place that had some APIs available, RESTful APIs, ones that I could call via like an HTTP protocol. And I stumbled upon this Rapid API website. And if you go to the rapidapi.com website, click on products and go to the Rapid API marketplace and then click on go to the marketplace, you will see a list of APIs. It's just amazing how many they have collected here. What's really cool about this is you can set up a free account and you can make queries to these APIs for free as long as you meter your access based upon how they've set it up. So let's click on open weather, for example. I'm not even logged in yet. And what you see over here is this is the API. These are the calls that are available, like current weather data. And then you see in the middle here how you actually make the call. You see a sample code snippet on the right. Um, let's say we wanted to do this in C with you know, uh, lib curl, curl library. It shows you how you would do it. And then it gives you an example of what a JSON response would look like in this case. 
And if we scroll up, you'll see that there's a pricing button. So if you click pricing, and most of these have this, you'll see a basic, no money per month, with a limit on how you can use, what functionality, functionality you will get, as well as how often you can make the calls, like 500 calls per month. So this is just awesome. So I set myself up, up an account and I recommend you do the same. And by looking at these endpoints, you'd be amazed at the kind of data that you can pull onto your data, your data frame using this. Um, a couple suggestions. Um, if you look at the C lib curl like we did a few moments ago, and you look at the code, it's taking its time coming up, isn't it? And we look at the code. This is the header that you're going to build out. And I'll show you where that goes. You're also, once you set up an account, you're going to have an API key. By the way, I set up an account. I did not need a credit card. I have given them no billing information. Um, so anyway, all the information is here that you need. And then you need to be able to parse it with the Arduino um, JSON library. So with that, let's go over to the code that I've actually written. And I'm going to share with you so that you can kind of see how to leverage these things and make your data frame yours containing the information you're most interested in. All right, so this is the code in the Arduino IDE. All right, so this is the code to drive the data frame. If we look at it, we're using the ESP8266 uh, libraries, we're using Arduino JSON, and we are using the GXEPD2 uh, library. Uh, let's take a look at the code here. We've got a debug flag for serial output. This sleep time, I've got mine set for 60 minutes, meaning the ESP8266 will sleep. Drawing that 10 milliamps, it'll wake up each hour and go off and do what I want it to do. JSON memory buffer, I just decided to go ahead and set it at 2K. It's allocated within the functions. Um, there are two functions I've written, display stock price and display YouTube subscriber count. This private data here, this is where you'll, you will fill in your information, what your Wi-Fi SID is, your Wi-Fi password. If you're going to use that rapid API, the key that they give you, as well as if you want to get um, your subscriber information for your channel, this is where you fill that in. Um, basically, when setup gets called, which happens when you hit reset and also when it wakes up and does a reset, first thing it does is connect to the Wi-Fi. Really can't do much on the, on the display unless we've got a Wi-Fi connection. I initialize the display and I rotate to portrait mode. In the loop, I've got the stock prices commented out of mine. I'm only pulling the YouTube subscriber count. But you can do both or add stuff. Do, do whatever's cool for you. Uh, when it's done, it tells the display to hibernate, and then it puts the ESP8266 in a sleep mode. In this case, deep sleep for 60 minutes. Let's take a look at the code for the stock prices. This, what you, this is what uses the rapid API um, stock pricing. In this array here, you can add as many um, stock symbols as you'd like. Uh, it figures out its own size. Um, all the code is set up like this. In the first part of the function, you'll see it go get the data. In the second part of the function, it'll display it. So you can kind of copy these sections if you want. So here we are making an HTTPS request. Here's the call, the, the RESTful URL. We're going to replace the stock symbol. We're going to do this four times. So in this case, the RESTful API did not allow a list of stock symbols. Um, it, you had to call them one at a time. You might find an API that allows you to call it once and pass it a, a comma separated list. But in this case, that's not what I used. So you see the code goes through, puts you each symbol in, modifies the header. I showed you where the rapid API header was in that lib, um, lib curl C code. This is kind of the same thing where you've grabbed that. And then it um, gets the results if everything goes well. Uh, HTTP 200 status code. It allocates a JSON buffer. 
the 2K buffer. It um, deserializes. It basically converts it to JSON. And then we can query it and get the stock prices. Um, if you have problems, it's probably going to be because the data that you're getting back from whatever API is greater than the 2K that I allocated. So you will want to increase your buffer. You can actually query it as well and get the size. That's another way to do it. Um, so, and then, okay, so now we've got the stock prices. Now we go through and uh, clear the screen, set the font, display the word NASDAQ, and then I loop over the stock symbols and I print them onto the display. And then I tell the display to display them. Pretty simple. Now the YouTube subscriber doesn't use Rapid API, but it does use the Google APIs, which I've set up for myself. You can go off and look at that. If you're trying to use anything that's Google property, um, they want you to use their Google APIs. So this is very similar to the last um, function call that we saw for the stock quotes. Here we go, we, we do everything up front. We replace everything that we need to. We make the actual HTTPS call. Uh, we get the data. We deserialize it. We Now that we have a JSON object, which looks like an array, by the way, we query the values that we want. We end that, and now we talk to the display, and we print out. Here's a graphic logo, I think, of, yeah, the Yahoo, the uh, YouTube, excuse me, the YouTube logo. And then I print out some information, and that's it. And it returns back to the loop where it ends up going to sleep. And then we do the next thing again in an hour. So this is for you to use. Take this code. Have fun. Change it. If you come up with some really cool stuff, please add it in the comments below. I think that would be really neat to see what some people can do with this. Well, that's the end of another project. That's our ESP8266 data frame. I hope that you've learned something. I hope that you get to make your own data frame. Share in the comments below what kind of data you're pulling onto your frame. Um, as you can see, I'm using a YouTube a subscriber count. <laughs> and as you saw in the video, it went from 201 down to 200. We want it to go the other direction. If you haven't subscribed, consider it. Uh, if you don't want to, really no big deal. Um, what's important is that you get something out of the channel and you learn something new every day. All right. Take care. See you next time. I'm sitting here testing it. And the thing's not waking up. And I realize I did not put the, the reset jumper to D0. I mean, the thing's going into a deep sleep. Not just a deep sleep, forever sleep. Man. Maybe I need to uh, follow my own schematics a little bit better. Oh, that should do it.